Chasing Leviathan is a podcast about pursuing truth, one big question at a time through the discipline of listening. Truth is too big to tame. But if we pay close attention, we might get the chance to glimpse something truly magnificent. So please join me in this pursuit, one week at a time. Dr. Wong, so happy to have you here today. Uh, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself. How did you get interested in um, your field? And uh, especially what led you to write this book on uh, yin and yang, which I was happy to uh, to find out how to pronounce that properly. So this is the book we're talking about, Yin Yang, The Way of Heaven and Earth in Chinese Thought and Culture. Uh, what led you to write this book? Oh, thank you very much. You know, I basically trained in philosophy, but uh, I was born and raised in China. And in China, I actually trained in philosophy to learn Hegel. Oh, okay. So, and then I got the opportunity to come to this country to uh, further studies, to getting, to go to graduate school. And then as time goes by, and then I got a job in Los Angeles and then started field. Oh, yeah. Um, especially when going teaching, being discussion with a student. And I found out I do should think about how this philosophy in more bigger context, not mm. just in the German philosophy. Right. So you want a global context. Now, think about the Yin Yang book is I went to Venice Beach in uh, Los Angeles. I did not expect you know, this location it, for, for the, the yeah. inspiration. Okay. Venice Beach. Yeah, Got it, it. It's the, yes. People saying it's a um, source of evil. <laughs> you know, it's everything's, everything going very, a lot of, um, diversity and uh, so I saw the people have yin yang you know you can see yin yang mm -hmm. in surfing boards mm. yin yang in earrings yin yang in candles so then I'm all I'm so wow this is a popularization of this concept mm. seems to miss some very important solid deep uh, wisdom mm. so I feel that this is there is obligation for me to trying to figure out, okay, what is this yin yang is all about? Mm. You know, I need to um, really to look into, explore into it, and then also to uh, enact these ideas. So it's actually spent about seven years to research, to work, to write, to think about it, and then trying to return to a true meaning of yin yang. And the, and the, yeah, that's that's how this whole ideas come about. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I we referenced it earlier, but for our listeners, you know, in the West, it, this is commonly called yin yang, right? The yin and the yang, and it's uh, pronounced yin yang, which I think I'm still butchering it, but at least it's closer. Uh, what are some other common misconceptions besides, you know, the mispronunciation that's so prevalent? What are some other common misconceptions that you deal with? Yeah, first of all, people look at yin yang and say, oh, that's so cool. You know, it's <laughs> symmetrically, you know, very appealing, aesthetically appealing right. symbols, right. which I agree. Okay? So the misconceptions I think mainly is this. They tend to think about yin yang as opposition, mm. black and white, you know. And then there is uh, things in the life, there's good and the evil, and we fight, we um, using good to overcome evil. So that is one type of problem we see sim simplifies this diversity of yin yang. So another idea is, is giving this normative judgment. You know, one yang is good, the yin is bad, which is not... This is not the case. If you think about, do you like day, but you hate night? You know, you say night is bad. You know, you don't make this kind of normative judgment. Right. So I think the one is one. Uh, second one is 
kind of I tend to look at it a little bit deeper, thinking, oh, yin yang is a balance. Can see black and white. Oh, they are doing, you know, perfect harmony, a balance. I will say yes and no because yin yang symbol is not really a circle. Why would I say so? Because in Greek philosophy, circle is a perfect shape.、Mm. Circle is it's kind of like completion. Right. But the yin yang is not. You know, it appear to be circle, but actually it's always open. So if the you think it's balance and harmony, but it's a dynamic balance and harmony. That another word is any moment. Yin Yang will move.、Mm. You know the the a so called the balance. It's a temporal. It's just a, so that's why if you look at the Yin Yang symbol, there is a dot within you know、um, uh, light. There is light within dot. So it's like two fish chasing each other, and there is eye. So the idea is there is nothing consistent. Yin without the Yang, or Yang without the Yin, and the Yin Yang is constantly in the movement, constantly in this motion. And、uh, one of the examples, maybe I can、uh, examine, you know, to think about why I think Yin Yang is a constant、uh, movement. If you think about, you put up a book of Yin Yang. If you Um, can hold right, so you can hold the sideways, upside down. No matter what, it is still in Yang symbol. In in contrary to think about the cross, only one way to hold. Right. Right. Any another way to hold will be um, display. Um, it can disrespect. But in Yang is not said. Oh yeah, in this moment you're holding. This way, that's simply because you know there's yang maybe more than yin, but another way around, the yin will be around the yang. No matter how do you present it, will not hurt in integrity of yin yang symbol. So that symbol itself, that just your experience with this symbol, you already know this. Um, a, a deep this thing, the idea of yin yang, and also maybe better way to think about yin yang is like a spiral. You know, you can constantly moving, going forward or downward.、Right. That's okay, but it's not perfect,、uh, fixed, and uh, uh, a still a、uh, image. But rather, it's a movement. Flexible, so forth. Yes. Yeah, and I I love that because、uh, a circle, even if you go around the circle, you're repeating. Whereas if you have a spiral, it you will、yeah. have cycles, but you are moving in each cycle. So while you'll have things that I mean, very like you know, this is something we see in the seasons, right? Like time still、right. marches on, even though you have reoccurring seasons. Um. Yeah.、Uh, <laughs> Even as you're talking about、uh, night and day, and like how you know we say, "Oh, day is good, night is bad." As someone who's about to have、uh, a third child,、um, <laughs> night is precious, <laughs> sleep is precious. So I appreciated that example. <laughs> I think that's really, yes,、uh, yes, important. Do you see any parallels between、um, this kind of discussion and Hegel?、Uh, your studies in Hegel. Yeah,、um, I mean Hegel is very important, the German philosopher, and he really to have this giant vision to see how world、uh, evolve,、mm. and then he has this Geist, absolute spirit. So one of the things you see is, is how he also have this dynamic way to thinking about the reality, you know, synthesis, antithesis, and.、Um, Synthesis. Yeah, so this, yeah. See, there is similarities in there. However,、uh, Hegel is living in his head. <laughs> yeah. So it's everything is conceptual. Yes. Although there is implications to political, moral uh, uh, lives,、mm. but it's not a lived experience. Yes. Yin Yang is different. Yin Yang is a lived experience. 
And then, like you just seen, it's a cyclical. It's not a straight line. Hegel, Hegelian's way, movement is going towards ultimate destiny and then going straight forward. Mm -hmm. So there is some sort um, ending in there. Uh -huh. But Yin Yang said, no, there is always, there is opening. Just like heaven and the earth have eternity, but you don't see when heaven and the earth are going to end it. Mm. That's not our concern, right? We're always thinking we're being with in this constant dynamic uh, movement. So there is um, many uh, differences. Of course, you will think about this um, different cultural, historical, you know, philosophical transition. That's of course, but then we can simplistic quickly seeing there is truly there is a differences. And so this is one of the things I also like to talk about because yin yang symbol, besides talk about the yin yang and the more current interests and the teaching all in toward the Taoism. Mm. So, so Taoism is a nature inspired theory and the practice. So for me, I will think I will really like to think taking philosophy uh, as a way of life. Mm. So I was thinking, so, okay, so study Hegel, give me a job, but a study Tao, give me a life. So that's, that's what, uh, yes, I will see. Mm -hmm. I want to return to that for sure. Um, do you mind, and I, I realize that this is a, can be a tall order in a, in a short amount of time, but you mentioned there are six forms or maybe modes of uh, walking through what yin-yang means. Can you talk about those six forms? Yeah. Okay, so let me set up the context. Mm. So what is yin-yang ultimately is, right? I don't want to, I, I go away, stay away the simplistic ideas, good or bad, um, dualistic uh, mindset. I also don't think about just a simple uh, balance harmony. Then I will see use one simple idea. We say, okay, what exactly yin yang is about? I think yin yang is about the relationships. It's about the connectivities. The relationship we are seeing in the world, we live in this world, we connecting with things, right? The iPhone, whatever, you know, the car, we connecting with the things. And also we connect with the event, like you're going to become father, your child is going to born, right? This is the event. And the people, you know, you're going to deal with, right? The, a, you, as a father, you're going to have children to take care of. And these people also dealing with is yourself, right? So basically in, the, in this world, we can see we relate to things, event, and the people. Got it. So how, how this relationship works? How should we um, think about relationships? So now in, through my study with uh, all the classical text, looking at um, uh, Chinese cosmology, logic, human body, and uh, strategy, and uh, medicine, so forth. So then I trying to formulating six relationships. This is so you're, then you could, first of all, you could ask why six, not the 12, right? <laughs> why, why not four? Well, so that's good. This is a valid question because I look at it because I saw this six is, is very common. Mm. So there is a certain ways there is a little bit arbitrary. Okay. There is a certain kind, but I see this. It's some way we see a so much uh, all the time we see it. Okay, but in the Chinese medicine textbook, they, they talk about 16, mm. you know, so I reduced it to six. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so first one, yeah, first one is a contradiction. Mm. It's a tension, conflict. So in other words, when we encounter, we were living in this world, the encounter relationships, first one, probably tensions, differences, and so forth. So I called Mao Dun. This is from the story, probably you have to read because otherwise I will be really long. 
But so the, the question is, we do have a tension. We do have, uh, you know, differences with things, with people, with others, and even with ourselves. Sometimes we split to, to do or not to do, right? So, so this whole, so that's the first question. So how yin yang will be deal with this? Um, okay. So you, if you don't mind, I, yes. I think it, you know, uh, it's a great story. You know, I just, I just glanced at it. Mm-hmm. The idea of you have a man who's selling spears and selling shields, and it's a great way. I'm, I'm definitely going to steal this to talk about the. You have uh, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object because he's a salesman and he says, "My spears can go through anything, and my shields can stop anything." And then one of the people who's buying is like, "Wait a second, what happens when one of your spears tries to hit the shield?" Yeah, and he's like, "So you, you run into this where it's like." Okay, one of these things are running like this is running into each other. One of these things is wrong, or like how is it? How do you resolve this kind of question? Right, right. So that's yin yang will help you. Yeah, you know. So it's another word. Yin yang is aggression, mm. right? Sometimes assertive, want to do it. Another yin will be uh, non presence. Right, passive. You don't know like if somebody really mad at you, like like I will see from um with my student, I see, okay, if your mom really mad at you, right? Your mom can do two things yelling at you, very strong power, and then silent as a tear down. Right. So it's it's quietness, soft. Mm. And then which one will give you more, which one has more power? Right. So, so this is one of the things when somebody threw you a punch, mm-hmm. you duck. Yeah. Right? So they, they come with the young, you use yin to respect. But that doesn't mean you not do anything. You, that's how martial arts is about. Mm-hmm. The blending. You see, okay, I ducked, avoided, but then I would find the, create a space, then I come to give, to really not react, but respond. Right, okay. which is that so, movement. So this is, that's a movement, yes. So another word, when you have conflict, if you have tension, and you have this really uh, struggle with things, then what do you need if from yin yang perspective is change, is a change a position, is adjusting. So that's what say. If somebody is young, you form yin. If somebody is yin, you give a little bit of yang. You know. So this is how it's a tango. That is repositioned. So that's the one thing. Second thing I think is um, a release relationship is uh, 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 I think this uh, a dependence. Okay, so in any things, of, think about this concept of door, okay? And the concept of door is, you see, this is a door. You use this concept, then it already implies door has a two mode, which is open and a close. If the door just a close, not open, then that's a wall, hmm. right? So it's it's not... That's another door. But if the door um, just uh, all close all the time, that's a wall. But it's open all the time, that's empty space. Yeah. So you can see. So in another word, yin yang shows everything is interrelated, interdependent. Yeah. So it's, it's one. So this is uh, this interdependence we will see. Mm. And then third one, actually, it's also very uh, connected. It's, um, I think, a mutually contained. Mm. Okay. So I, let's see if, if I and you have a conflict and I want to make a, a revenge. Guess what? There's revenge also. You, you think you want to hurting others, but actually you're hurting yourself as well. Right. Because you are interrelated and then you are mutually contained. Many things we want to see, it's made mutually contained. And then there's, if not mutually contained, and then 
um, that's not a relationship, but because that's the world it is. Like a mind and the body is mutually contained. You know, your gut is a problem. You, your mind also foggy, mm-hmm. right? So there's many scientific stories that can help us to 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 illustrate this idea. So that was in Yang's, and then uh, support. Okay, so mutually support. You you really need. Um, a, a, a support. If you are in any relationship, then you have to the, support each other, mm. right? So even like talk about your father sub, seems, oh, you only support your ch- children, but actually there is a support because the children make you a better human beings. Yeah. Right? So in that word, it's also support. And also relationship. If you think about a personal relationship, Two people has to be working together, support each other. You cannot uh, dominate each other. Mm. Is it also like a, a, a friendship? Friendship is a friend, person A, person B forms a friendship. That's a third thing. Your A and the B need to contribute to this. Not the A trying to control B or control the friendship or B control the friendship. That's not going to last in long. Mm. Right? So, so, so the idea is to mutually support. Another one, it will be resonance. Okay, so resonance is very interesting uh, for, uh, uh, phenomena because of something you 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 seeing and you experience, then you really has respond. This respond and then that that really come the ripple effect the uh, results. Well, there's one uh, I think. Mm. Um, I think a German um, sociologist that did it, his name is Rosa, uh, Hermann is Rosa. He read this big book called The Resonance. It's, a, it's really, I said, oh, wow, it's, he's contemporary uh, thinkers, but, but and then it's really working on um, old concept, like yin yang concept. So here he gives very interesting examples. Example is like this if in the morning you get up, you drag, you don't like to get up, and then you have to make a, a, a breakfast for your kids, and then you bring them to school, and then you go to work. You, you really just do go through this emotion. Mm. So that is your not presence. You complain, you feel bad, terrible. Now, resonating event will be you get up, you're happy, you're making the breakfast with your children, and then you talk with them, you're driving, you sing the song, and then you couldn't wait to get you to your office. So that you are connected. You connect with what in there. You have no alienation. Yeah. The first one is that you alienated. You're not resonating. Okay. So that is this is so, I said, oh, my, I wonder whether he ever read the, <laughs> the yin yang because the yin yang is about resonating. Mm. You see something, you know, you see, you in, really are the presence, a tentative. Mm. And the, so, and the last one is a transformation. Mm. This we will see, you know, transformation is a very uh, interesting idea because we know day and the night uh, alternates, you know, four season alternates. But we usually forget something called a silent transformation. For example, right now, it's a daytime. But within this daytime, we actually carried on the night in the back. This is Dao De Jing, chapter 42, thinking we always in front, we see a young, you embrace. What happens right now is a day, it's a light, da, da, da. But then there is there is also we carry the in hmm. we embody the yin in the this bag. In other words, yin is not exist yet, but the yin will come. That means night will come, and then from present from non-presence become presence. That's a transformation. So you will see silent journey start one first step. That means to make your effort, gradually work on it, forming the habit of something will happen, right? Gradually working. You see the movement. You see the uh, transformation in our life. And then one is something you, you got to embrace it. One of the interesting transformations is like aging, mm. right? So you not stand in the mirror and today suddenly said, oh, I become so old. 
all your children, you, there is no one point that, oh, you're getting old. No, every day, this ch- children getting old, every day you're getting older, mm. right? So you're aging. But the yin yang idea is, well, accepting, you know, that's a part of life. There's a transformation at any moment, a giving time and a space. It's a happening. And then the problem is you want to resist, right? You want to do a botox or you want to holding your children forever. You know, you can't. They're going to go. You're going to empty, you know, um, home, whatever, right? So, so, so this is the uh, changes, transformation. Um, we experience in life. Now, yin yang will help you to A, to see what's silent moving, and then also to, to uh, encounter it and to, to, in many ways, acceptance. That's probably the best way to see it. Mm. I want to see celebrate, but there's certain things you don't want no. to celebrate. <laughs> Something you do, though. Age, yes. you know, yeah, you you gracefully getting old. So what? You know? Yeah. Yeah, I and I, I think so. That's six relationships, right? So that's the best way. If you get anything, you think about yin yang beyond the simplistic account. What? How should I do? Well, I work on the six things. Think about okay, how do I make a connection work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so a couple thoughts. I just want to make sure. Uh, these are different examples that come to mind that might help clarify. Uh, one, and this is from before, even you were talking about the six things, but I think it comes out in the transformative, is that idea of gradual transformation, that last one. And it was actually yeah. really helpful, even as we were defining yin-yang at the beginning, that you talked about yin-yang, it works no matter how you turn it. With a cross, if you turn a cross upside yeah. down, it's something different, right? And so even as we're talking about a common problem and there are ways around it and people have, have worked through this, but um, it's a, a common problem with Western philosophy are problems of identification and definition because it doesn't deal with gradual. Well, right. It's like, when am I old? Is it when someone calls me old? Is it, you know what I mean? Instead of just being like, well, it's just something that yeah, happens. It, yes. Right. Um, so right. I, I think like the transformation makes sense to me. Um, now, I don't want to step on too many toes here. I was talking to Dr. Balbinder Bogal about uh, Sikh, uh, Sikhi uh, or Sikhism, you know, in, in the more like Anglicization mm. of it. And mm. he talked about his definition, right? It's something that people disagree about. But his definition of karma was that you constrain your own possibilities. And so when you're talking about yes. um, mutual inclusion and resonance, that idea of resonance and alienation, mm-hmm. the reason that vengeance hurts you is because you are yeah. literally limiting your options. Like it, it, by accepting the hurt and forgiving, you move on and you open up options. If you focus vengeance, yes. you, you tend to uh, tighten yourself into a circle of options that only end in pain. And so for him, that was karma and it seems like that is that very similar to what you're talking about with like mutual inclusion and resonance. Yeah, great examples. It's great. Okay, so I think in the yin yang account, it's not the necess- It's an, it's not a karma. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. but it's a different. What different is this? So why this yin yang is existing in the natural world? Human body everywhere. Mm. So it's concept of chi. Ah. Chi is energy. Maybe we just see, let's see, just energy. So basically we live in this giant chi field. And you are just a little point. You are a little carry of chi within this giant uh, field. So now your uh, negativity, because you want to hurting somebody, you have this kind of, um, you know, um, like you said, re- revenge, whatever that is, even um, aggression, for example, aggression. So you put into the world, and then that chi actually has a negative uh, influence and that come back to you. Mm. Because the question is, you cannot control. You say, okay, I do, like, see, if I 
you know, breaking off with some friend, I lost the job, all that I've got hurt, all this, you be wronged. You know, you have all the right to be angry, you know, to be sad. All that is legit. We're not saying, uh, it, you, oh, you can control this. Use your mind, control this kind of mm. uh, negativity side. No, it's not that situation. Whether it's, okay, you be wronged, you have all this uh, uh, negative energy. Now, so here next steps, how do you do it? That here is not in, not a control it and overcome it, but rather direct it. Mm. So in other words, how can you direct your sadness into like you really, you cannot help you stop, cannot help constantly thinking this sadness. No, you know, take a walk, you know, going to uh, somewhere to help the poor, to feel the uh, uh, to also to counting what you have to be uh, grateful, to count for your uh, gratitude, right? So this kind of uh, directing energy is the, I think maybe yin yang mm -hmm. um, way to handle the problem in our life. And uh, um, it's a little hard, right? So it's it's kind of like, how do you direct? How do you do it? Right. Like you said, okay, op open yourself to do something else. But how do you do it? This is also, I would say the Taoist idea is to make your body, you know, your spirit and your energy become one. Mm. Work together. Right. So lots of times they will do body cultivation, uh, fasting of mind, right? So so-called meditation, right? So there is different ways to handle. Basically, one of the important method is to put your mind on diet. So that is called fasting of mind. That's the Taoist text that Zhuangzi talk about a lot. You know, just a setting and a forgetting, mm. basically. <laughs> Literally saying <laughs> setting and the forgetting. Yeah. So that is really the good way to then, once you're setting, you're forgetting what it is, then you open up, then you can attract more positive energy mm. and then direct your negative energy and gradually dilute it, you know, and then work through it. Uh, and if you don't mind. So that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that fasting of the mind? I think you mentioned kind of as a synonym meditation, though I know that has a lot of loaded connotations. Mm -hmm. I can see why you, like fasting of the mind definitely gives a different idea. How do you set and forget in the idea of fasting of the mind? Like how do you, okay. do, you do you work okay. through those things or you try and empty your mind? What What's the idea there? Okay. So there's a, Two, way, two or three ways we can think about this. Mm. The first way is to looking at your judgment. Mm. Okay. So you get mad, often it's your perspective see the world. This is, this is wrong. This is right. This is, you know, he or she is did wrong to me. And this is horrible. This is right. So it's a judgment. So this is in the drawings to talk about in chapter two, talk about it. you want to equalize things. You know, you from Taoist point of view, you really not seeing big differences. Mm. So there is one thing, it's, 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 a, it's a really interesting. Actually, my daughter's car being, being uh, broken in yesterday and it still is her really expensive uh, sunglasses. She just bought it, you know. So then, um, and then the, the things, okay, so how do you deal with her? So I use the example, maybe it's a terrible example. So I tell her, you know, that in the Taoist uh, the text actually is a hand face, well, I'm wearing a Chinese classical text. So the way to dealing with, um, you lost something you lost, and then you will say, "Okay, I got the was someone in this world happy mm. because they got my stuff." Basically, the idea is I lost something, but somebody said, "Oh yeah, somebody is really happy." You know, you lost this, but then you could say, "Oh, you know, um, mm. your car is not broken; it's just someone because also she didn't close the door." 
Okay. She didn't lock the door. If she locked the door, so somebody just go through the uh, door yeah. and then pick the sun. So, so the question is that sometimes it's one way um, our mind, we cannot put the things into proper place. Mm -hmm. In other words, the perspectives. So, so they, this, first of all, we wanted to do, see things in this equalized way. Okay, so you, you see, whenever you see some idea, it's just a moment, time, now you're making this kind of judgment. There is limits to this judgment. And then you will see a bigger picture. So in order to do this, so that's the, for, for, then in order to do this, what do you have to do? You want to release this kind of judgmental things. Mm. And then you, that's not the world uh, operates because the world not operates according to your will, your wish, your desire, but the world operates its own way. And then you have as a perceiver, how do you put the things into perspective? So, so, so then, then you, it's very, very hard. You cannot do what do you do. So now come to fasting of mind. Hmm. What is the fasting of mind? It's, it's to setting, it's to training your attentiveness. So in this chapter, talk about you generate all your mind, your chi, and into one point. And it's a, then a turn into emptiness. What's that mean, emptiness? Just release. Basically, it's a release things. If you think about what is the best job interview, what is the best performance you take the test, right? So the people say, oh, be yourself, be yourself. What's that mean is to release, don't think about, oh, what I'm doing this weekend. You know, do I have, how much bank account I have? You know, in my bank account. So that's called a distraction. Then you cannot do good in your job interview or take a test. So the best things you have to put your mind in that at the presence and is have this concentration. He called the singularity, just number one, one yeah. to generate everything, the oneness. You feel all oh, the, the, you know, psychology called the flow, you know, in the zone of a flow, whatever you want to de define it. But so in this way, you tend to emptiness and that he called in you know, setting and the forgetting. Mm. And that called the fasting of mind. But it's hard, right? How could we do? We are jargging, you know, how do I put the food on the table? How how there's tomorrow is important work I have to do, da da da, da stress. So then they come up, John's gave a, a quite a bit, especially later on developing a different type of uh, meditation plans, like a meditation ideas. So there is idea is a visualization. You know, you can, you can think about the most things you are very pleasant, right? So then you can think about what's like when you are attend, going there to the ocean, to the, to the, I don't know, waterfall or something, you know, you, you can visualize it. And uh, then there is um, a different, then they also, your connectivity. You can think about the, my, my eye is connected to the heaven and the earth, the sun and the moon, mm. you know, and then I, because eyes to sing, sun and the moon give us lights, allow us to see. So, so there is concrete practice. Well, of course, Zen Buddhism has this, there is a connection between Chan Buddhism and Zen Buddhism and Chan Buddhism, this method of fasting of mind connect, you can trace back to Taoist Zhuangzi's text, Zhuangzi's oh, okay. method. So there is this, and then another uh, practice will be um, the fasting of mind is called the Daoying. It's, it's like a bodily movement. All this bodily movement in, in a long time, um, Classical Chinese body movement is copied from um, 44 animals. You know, it's animal movement. The tigers, Korean, you know. So once you know, like, when you're so stressed, so that you go take a walk, go in the gym, you know, to work out, you give sweat, somehow release you, or take a nap. <laughs> right? So, so all these kind of things, you know, working on your body. 
and connecting with your body, listen to your body. That's part of directing the energy. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it, it, and this is where we talk about the different, and we could talk about oppositions that might, that's probably the wrong way to talk about it, but yin and yang uh, also include things like body and spirit, right? That process of feeding yes. each other, where it's like, if you take care of your body, yeah. your body will take care of your mind. If you take care of your mind, your mind will take care of your body. Yeah. Um, and it, mm -hmm. there's this real feeling of like, just making sure that you get in sync, right? Like, uh, or you're out, yes. and that's that idea. It, is that going back maybe to resonance, that idea of like being in sync with your body and your body being in sync with your mind? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I use, usually I use two, two words to explain why is alignment. Okay. Yeah. You know, you're aligned to, to, to with the, to the, um, the Tao, mm -hmm. you know, he says, so it's like a, a alignment in the sense of the alignment with regularities, you know, like, for example, you have, uh, uh we all have a circadian, you know, system. Yeah. Right. The, so especially the jet lag is the best example to, to seeing, you know, you're physically, uh, you know, uh, a, in, I just came back from Europe. So I physically in U.S., but on my body, my circadian system still in Europe. Okay. So that means, so, so for my, me in my class, I'm asking how many hours you have to sleep, you know? So the same, so like your body will break down. If you don't sleep, why we don't, we, why every 24 hours have, we have to sleep? Why don't do 48? You're so strong. Let's do 48. Let's do 72. Then you take a rest, right? So, so, so that's alignment as well. Another one is atonement. A tournament and the best example is like a surfing in the ocean. You know, what's a good surfer in the ocean? You're not, you're not like the waves to, to push you around. Then you're not a surfing, right? And then you have to know the timing. You have to have a strength, catch the wave. Now, if we think about the life is a giant wave, can you catch it? And then you catch this lively wave. That means that's your opportunity presented, then you'd go run it. If an opportunity not there, then don't impose your view to the wave, then you're going to crash. Yeah. So you're going to die. So so catching the wave is the way to think about the atonement with the da, with the waves of things that. Mm -hmm. So, and when you're talking about, uh, and I was going to ask about uh, Chi, you had a, when you talk about yin yang cosmology, I did want to go there. I'm glad that you, we, we've ended up there. Um, so when we talk about Chi as this energy field, that's that idea of attunement, right? That it's, uh, yeah. that your energy is yeah. in, like in sync or resonating with what's around you. And then, so would, right. uh, would uh, attunement be with energy outside you? And alignment would be energy inside inside you, or am I misunderstanding that? What's the difference between alignment? And no, um, yeah, I think the both. So you're working on just use different terms to describe. Got, oh, okay, um, okay. Describe the same uh, action, right? How do you make you know a, a Western idea? Oh, right or not? Uh, not right, you know, discernment, consolation, desolation. This type mm. you do in head. But the Tao will say, no, bring our body, right? Mm. So alignment could be alignment, internally alignment to outside. And atonement also can be atoned with your own self because if, if, if you, you know, if you want to be, um, I don't know, basketball player, I can't be a basketball player because I only five, three, you know, I'm not a seven, right? So, so, so you got to be, have these recommendations and say, oh yeah, I, I don't, but I can be a marathon runner. You know, I have two legs, <laughs> you know, marathon runner, not, not, not require me the heights, physical heights. Mm. So then I can, you know, I toned with this kind of situations, right? So, so you work hard, but then you also know, you know, your strengths and the weakness and the maximize, optimize your strengths and avoid your uh, weakness. So that's 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 type of idea when we're thinking about the life issues. 
Yeah. And, and you've mentioned it a couple times here, but I did want to ask uh, specifically, because I loved the way you said this, about Hegel being all in your mind, right? It's a way for the mind, but Tao is a way for life, if I'm uh, quoting you correctly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. can you describe... Um, uh, <laughs> You know, and I know that I think it's uh, the phrase is the Tao, which can be named is not the Tao, um, but the mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but uh, as best you can, if you can describe what Tao is so that people can understand it. Now, if you've made a couple references and I think people are getting a picture, but if you could yeah. explain that, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. I always think a Tao is a pass. Mm -hmm. It's the way. It's a skill. So originally, Tao is means, you know, um, just a physical road. Mm. And then the Tao, the Chinese character, this concept, the Tao is a human head walking on the road. So this is what you would think about. Oh, life is a journey. Life is a path. Now, life is a road. You know, from beginning, you're born to maturity, to decline, to death. It's a whole the thing. So that then Tao is the way how to get things done because Tao is it's the wonderful. So there's different accounts. So we will see one the Tao is the account of the Tao. It's the path, it's the road. And then also this text called the Tao Te Ching, 5,000 Chinese characters to think a Tao, Tao is a source of every myriad of things. In other words, everything has its own Tao. Everything has its own path, right? The tomato has the plant has its own path. And then um, you will see even, you know, everything else have this own way. So then you want to be attuned to that path. What exactly? Like you have children, you know, different children, same parents, the same feet, the, the same, right? Yeah. Then they are so different. So different. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then what happens? So do you, do you want to have only one idealistic, uh, uh, a, a notion of child, your child, and then you impose all this thing to all your children? Doesn't work. Instead, you support your Tao of your children. What's your children's name? Uh, Finn and Soren. And then the little girl's going to be, okay, Frankie, want but yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so unique. <laughs> you want to say, okay, what is a Tao of Sorn, right? What Tao is uh, Frankie, whatever it is, right? So, so that's everyone has their own Tao mm. and you want to be aligned with that and support that. Right. To allow them be themselves. Yes. So that, that I think what the, the, the Tao here help us to see, to see things. Oh, actually, Everything got the Tao, and we want to, you know, support that. This is also we kind of think about the different Hegel and the uh, Taoist and the Yin Yang. Tao is 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 a source of reasoning. For example, mm. where we got our reasoning from? You could see in my my head, you know, propositional A and not A or A. Therefore, you know, all man um, immortal Socrates, man therefore Socrates immortal. Yes, sometimes we do need that logic. Yes, but then you want to say, oh no, we have lived the experience. And then we experience children differently. We experience a tree differently. We see sunshine, you know, sunrise, sundown. And how do we make out of this? Okay, we use that sun experience. We see using the tree experience and to give our inspiration to understand our own life. So that's to the source of reasoning, right? To understand the things are different. So why is it just have come from our living experience? Yes, uh, my background's in philosophical hermeneutics. So when you're talking about propositional value or propositional knowledge and Hegel, and even you move into Kant, um, this discussion reminds yeah. me a lot of discussions in Kant of judgment, this capacity we have to yeah. make judgments. And it's, a, it's an ability we have, but in Kant, it seems to be very truncated. It seems to be very narrow. Whereas when you go into the hermeneutic mm -hmm. uh, discussion, you know, someone like Gadamer, he starts bringing out the idea of practical wisdom, of the Greek idea of phronesis, mm -hmm. which is this 
Uh, it you can talk about as a capacity, but it, it's it's broad ranging. It's this ability to take the universal and make it match with particulars. Is there similarities there? And if the, and are there any differences? And what would they be? No. Well, again, I want to see is even karma, right? To think about the human humanities is art of interpretation, and life is interpretation. Mm. Right. So, so, so that, that kind of, yes, in some ways, Taoists have that elements to it, but I think it would be young. It's, it's just, there's a flesh in mm. here in Taoist teaching. Yeah. I don't know. God, I'm not talk about, okay. Uh, did, do, what do you eat this morning? You know, do you eat the processed food or you have you done your excess? Do you have enough sleep? Right. Right. So there's a flesh. In Taoist teaching, so it's all this kind, although there's conceptual uh, construction, yes. but yet you also give you concrete guidance mm. to see how do you live your life from all dimension. Like, you know, um, it's from, from eating to your know, regular, your daily routine, you know, there is a bunch of things. Yeah. They call the cultivating life, yang shen. Yeah. You know, so nourishing life, okay, called the nourishing life. So they put a life in the front line and it's a foundation, not the foundation of interpretation. Yes. And but I, rather it's. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's very, uh, that's really helpful. I mean, even as you're talking about like uh, everything has its own Tao. And when you talk about food, mm -hmm. one of the, problems facing americans is that diet is often shown as like this is what works for everyone and it doesn't take into account people's individual way people's individual bodies right like people respond right. differently to to different things right and it, it tends right. to cut um you know i have a different approach to this but like that that the American approach to things, the current system, often cuts off the rough edges in the names of efficiency. And what it does is it mm -hmm. actually hurts people as it cuts off instead of allowing them, you know, even as you're talking about parenting, like this is the way to parent and you have the ideal child, right? And right. instead of having, this is how someone should grow. That makes a lot of sense to me. This, this very embodied um, wisdom. Um, that, that's that's just me. Yeah, me I, 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 know, I know. One another thing is, I think maybe you want to think about it. Uh, we can think about it is the idea of a progress versus prosperity. Mm. Yeah. So in the capitalism, to keep you going, going to make a progress, always never ends. But then prosperity is okay. There's quality of life. There's all dimensional life. Life not just one thing. Mm. Life it's. Uh, it's it's many things, right? You you have your career, your personal life, your emotional health, your physical health, everything else in that pocket we call the life. Yeah. Right. So then take good care of that, and then you there's in there's yang, everything else in it between. Right. So 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 you don't just see black white only one way to getting it. That is become a problem. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this idea of maturity over perfection, would that be another way of thinking about it? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. I accept maturity means I just want the multiple dimensions. Yes. You know, and also, okay, so the, the simplicity, don't make simple things complicated. <laughs> It's it's just so amazing, you know, how human beings constantly is really simple. Yeah. And then just make this incredible. Even right now, I'm going to, even we have a Trady Joe, I don't know whether you have, you know, this this kind of um, groceries, they produce the things, it's crazy. It's just, it's, it's just a vegetable. Just <laughs> eat that uh, plain. <laughs> vegetable that's it you don't need to make chips you make this that yeah it's like yeah. what you know yeah have you noticed that people is trying to getting some sort of something you know yeah they're making commodities out of something that should just be simple right, right? if you complicate so, it you yes. can sell it <laughs>
Yeah, yeah just yeah. get a just go get a farmer's market and yeah. get some vegetable. That's it. You know, you don't need to go into so complicated process mm. that, um, as well. Yeah, you know. So absolutely. Um, and that's that, that idea of kind of all consuming, right? It keeps going. Like you're like you instead of just being like you know this can just be part and just something I can rejoice in the, the simple fruit, the simple vegetable. And like, you no know, progress is yeah. making something simple, further complicated. Um, uh, yeah. Right. As you talk about <laughs> all the different types of chips that have shown up that are healthy. Right. Um, that's interesting. I, I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, as we, as we kind of conclude here, what is one thing uh, again, for anyone who wants to dig further in there's, we barely even began to touch all the things that are in this book. Um, so it definitely worth the read, but I, I want to ask that as we conclude, what's one thing you would leave to our listeners? Wow. That's, is, uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be all good, Not like all consuming, but what's, what's one solid takeaway you would want them to, to leave with? Okay, so right now, I, because maybe, maybe I want to do some, um, because I'm right now really working on this, is idea of suppleness. Hmm. So this is the Taoist idea. It's, it's also idea of uh, yin, pay more attention to the yin aspect of your life. Hmm. You know, we got enough young. We are so aggressive. Yes. Now in the world now, let's pay attention to yin. You know, let's think about the, like, think about the tree. Mm -hmm. Think about the tree and then the rooted in ground and the yet they blows with the wing, mm -hmm. you know. But it's like a bamboo, right? You blow in the wind, but it never broke. Yeah. I think this is a good man, uh, image it will think about. It's to, to think about it's a certain time we want a more kind, mm. compassionate, uh, yielding to the world. And then don't think the world is all under your control. But rather, how do you support your surroundings, right? So to like a tree that to a certain time, like a bamboo bonded, but you yet still reserve your integrity. And maybe that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a better way to end it. That was really um, profound. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Wong, absolute pleasure having you on today. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being on. Yes, thank you. It's fun. Thank you.